So me and my husband always wanted three kids. We were like dead set that we're gonna have three. And because of how my first pregnancy went, I only want to go through it one more time. Adventures from the home front. Um, I'm Jessica. This is Amanda, Olivia, and Kate, and little baby James. Mm -hmm. And um, this is part two of pregnancy in the military. So we're so excited you guys are joining us again, and stay tuned. So we talked a little bit about like, your guys' personal experiences throughout your pregnancies, kind of like where you delivered all that stuff. Were there any, like, what were the complications in your pregnancies? Anything? Yep. <laughs> So I will say that no pregnancy goes off without a hitch. Everybody has some level of yeah. complication. Mm -hmm. And that's not to scare you. I mean, it could be as minimal as you get uh, nauseous, like you get morning sickness. Mm -hmm. And it can go all the way up to high-risk pregnancy situations. Um, so with my first, uh, I didn't have a high-risk pregnancy. I just had the typical, you know, moodiness and morning sickness um, leading all the way up to his birth. And then, <clears throat> so my water actually broke on my due date, which never happened. And uh, then we rushed over to the hospital. And as soon as uh, we got there, I pretty much begged for an epidural because I'm a huge wimp. <laughs> so I got the epidural like right away. And within an hour, <laughs> Kate's just going to tend to the baby. Within an hour of being there, I spiked a fever, and um, the my son's heart rate was dipping, and it ended up that I developed an infection, which is very rare because usually once your water breaks, you have like 24 to 48 hours before they even worry about something like that happening. So pretty soon after we got there, we were in the operating room having a c-section because oh they just need to get him out <clears throat> but everything turned out to be fine i mean his birth was <clears throat> he came out he went on antibiotics just to be safe i went on antibiotics the only thing that was hard about that part of the delivery is that when they put me under because it was an emergency <clears throat> they um i remember laying on the operating table and the anesthesiologist was like okay can you feel that? And I was like, yes. And so they gave me a little more and they were like, can you feel that? Yes. So one side of my body wasn't accepting the anesthesia. Oh. Um, and so they ended up having to just put me out. Oh. And I woke up in a recovery room like 20 minutes later and um, I said, okay, are we gonna start? And I looked down at my belly and my baby's gone. And they said, you're done. Like your baby's you know he's in the nursery right now they're just checking him out you're in recovery and i just lost it Aww. it was such a weird feeling to just wake up and, and think your baby not have not be pregnant anymore and have no idea what happened where your baby was it was just oh my super emotional it was like really traumatic yeah. and i feel weird saying that because it was just a C-section. Nothing happened. Like, we were healthy. It reminds me yeah. of, like, a true crime something where right? somebody's yeah. like, yeah, I woke up and my baby was gone. And it was like, yeah. Or, like, it was like, all a dream like, or, or like, something. Like, it a bad felt, horror movie or something It didn't like that. feel real. Yeah. And I remember, you know, when they brought my baby in about an hour later, and I got to hold him for the first time, and my husband came back into the room because he went with the baby, like, which is what I would have wanted. Like, yeah. stay with the baby. Um but when they brought the baby into me and I held him for the first time, I remember feeling like, okay, you're in my arms, you're here. But I remember asking my husband, I'm like, is this really our baby? Like, you're yeah. sure this is our baby? And he's like, yes, yes, yes. And yes, so been out of my sight. that was really traumatic because I just have no memory of his birth. I think when you're pregnant, the thing that keeps you going when things get hard is yeah. you, you just want that moment where you get to your baby's here and experiencing yes. birthing your child oh, and just sad. like having them go directly to your chest yeah. and I feel like that was taken away from me and so <clears throat> yeah that kind of set things I think that's what started um but I developed pretty bad postpartum depression after that yeah. and not to scare you because it doesn't happen to everybody mm -hmm. but um there's a higher 
um, risk of postpartum depression with C-sections. Mm. Yeah. Um, and they don't know why that is. I feel like for me, it stemmed from not having that emotional connection that you do when you yeah. get to experience birthing your child. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> that's a whole other topic that we can yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like postpartum depression is a whole other ball game. Yeah. But I will say if you do struggle with it, just seek help as soon as you can and don't feel yeah. guilty about it. Yeah. yeah. Because it's so common. And I think there's a real big stigma around it. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so yeah. That was my first pregnancy. My <laughs> second one. Whew. I'm sorry, I need a break. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like getting emotional. I'm like trying not to cry, trying not to cry. Oh. <clears throat> my second one was the exact opposite in terms of delivery. Um but I did in the last uh, trimester, right around 35 weeks, <clears throat> and I had a really weird symptom. I'm sorry, do I sound like a frog in my throat? <laughs> <laughs> We're all experiencing <clears throat> some bad like allergies, yeah. colds, or <clears throat> something over here. Mm -hmm. The pollen has been terrible. Just got really a like, double ear infection. Oh so. my god. Yes. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> but um, I had this really weird symptom develop where um, just, especially at night, like my palms were just itchy. Ooh. They were just, I would just itch constantly. My palms mm. and the soles of my feet. And I was just like, you know, whatever. It's probably nothing. Maybe I switched a new detergent. But I brought it up at my doctor's appointment. I was like, hey, like, is this like a thing? Like my palms are really itchy. And she kind of looked at me like that and I was like, what <laughs> she's like so um i just want you to go take a blood test down in the lab today before you leave she said it's probably nothing but that could be um that's one of the biggest symptoms of this condition called icp or cholestasis of pregnancy and it has to do with your bile duct acid levels um mm -hmm. being too high and that's like the number one symptom is that you're itchy itchy palms and itchy feet so i went and i took the test and uh, it came back right on the border of either having the condition or not. So they're like, well, we have to take it again next week and we'll see. Um, I said, well, what if I, if I have this condition, what does that mean? She goes, well, if you have it, um, we need to get the baby out right away because there's a high risk for stillborns in the last trimester of pregnancy. Oh my God. So I was like, oh Lord. I just didn't know if I had it in me to have another traumatic birth experience again. Like oh. this was supposed to be my rainbow baby, my because <clears throat> we had a pre we had a miscarriage in between pregnancies, yeah. <clears throat> and this was supposed to be my V back. I was gonna actually enjoy this um, birth experience, and I was just like, don't let this happen again. I don't want to go through it again. Yeah. I can't do it. I was terrified I was going to get postpartum again. Um, and so I went back a week later and um, took the test again and it came back positive. And so she called me, we were at a playground with my son and she said, you need to come in right away. We're inducing you today and we're getting the baby out. Oh and <clears throat> so I looked at my husband and I was like, okay, we're doing this. And I, I just remember asking her, I was like, can I still have my baby back? And she's like, I'm going to do everything that I can to, give you to try. Yeah. Like she's like, we will let you try. She's like, I'm not making any promises though. If you go too long or if there's like, we notice a complication, we're going to get him out again. Right. And I was like, okay. And, um, we got there like a couple hours later and they induced me and I was in labor for three days and they, they kept saying we might have to take him, we might have to take him, but they just let me, I was like, please don't, please don't, like, let me try. And I had my VBAC and he came out and he was healthy oh. as can be. And it was the most amazing experience of my entire life. So they asked me if I wanted to have the mirror and I said yes. And wow. they said 97% of people don't want to see anything to do with what happens down there. Is yeah. Comfortable yeah. with your body yeah. enough to be like, yeah. oh, you love to see I all of that. I didn't even want my husband down there. It's <laughs> like when we were, the, when they were like, practice, practice, and I was like, look away. Look away. Like, That's because they traumatize you in I'm like, seventh grade. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to be practicing. Look away. And then before you know it, they're like, go, 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 go. I was like, where are you? Get back over here. Where are you going? 
<laughs> You're yeah. missing it. He's like, you told me to look away. <laughs> yep. So I got the mirror because I didn't want to miss anything. Like I just wanted to experience it for fully, and it was amazing. So oh, complications can happen, but just roll with the punches and yeah. Yes. Um, so me and my husband always wanted three kids. We were like dead set that we're going to have three. And because of how my first pregnancy went, I only want to go through it one more time, mm -hmm. um, which sounds really selfish. I kind of feel bad saying that, but it was just like, such a draining experience. So I was bleeding in the beginning. Um, I didn't know what was going on and my husband was out of town at the time. He had gone back home to see some family and I went in and luckily, like I found out pretty quickly, um, I didn't realize this, but I'm O negative. So if you're O negative, you are a universal donor. Mm -hmm. You can give to anybody, mm -hmm. but you can only accept O negative. Mm -hmm. um, so what was happening was my baby was O positive, so my body was trying to abort. Mm -hmm. So when you're O negative, you have to go in and you get a shot every 12 weeks to prevent abort like an abort like your body aborting. So is that the same a, thing as rh negative or it's yes, different I, yeah, okay. RH negative. okay yes I, which i didn't even know was a thing so um got that taken care of and then um i had morning sickness like i wasn't really eating very much and once i finally got my appetite back i had to go in and do the um the gestational diabetes <laughs> test so I failed the first one, which they said is pretty normal. Most people fail it. Um, if you don't know what this test is, you have to like drink this like disgusting like gatorade type. I liked type it. Of, oh my god! I thought it no. tasted like an orange. No. Oh so my good. god! It was so sweet. And what this test is is that um, you drink this super sugary drink while you're fasting, and so I felt like so nauseous for it. And they test you within an hour to see how your body breaks down the sugars. So failed the first one. So th that, then I had to go in and do a three hour one. And I could not like even drive a car afterwards. Like I was so sick to my stomach. I had to like lay down in a dark room in the office. Um, failed that test by one point one point so I was technically diabetic um, how that happens is so apparently with gestational diabetes it doesn't mean that you're diabetic diabetic so once you deliver like the moment that you deliver you're no longer diabetic because your placenta gives off sugars so once you it's like I'm gonna go grab that little monkey. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps talking. <laughs> so once you like <clears throat> get rid of the placenta, you're no longer diabetic. Well the problem was because I failed it by one point mm -hmm. and they put you on this like super strict diet, I was so tired. My blood sugar was so low. They wanted between 100 and 139 and I was constantly at like an 80. So I was so tired. I was so drained. I just felt so sick all the time. I could not wait to get that baby out of you and be to done. deliver this baby. Oh my <laughs> as gosh. bad as it sounded. Yeah. Um, so once I went through that experience, I think that really altered as far as like um, moving forward because probably be diabetic the next time. Um, so I'm not really looking forward to that. I also developed, um, I guess what they call pica, or I think that's how you pronounce it, P-I-C-A. And it's where you have this taste in your mouth. Like you constantly want to chew. It can be either ice 
or some people even develop it where they have the need to like eat clay. Ooh. It's very My weird. Strange so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, I didn't Oh, I got it. I didn't have the clay one. I did have the ice one though, and I ended up breaking a molar Ooh. in the back of my mouth um, a week before I delivered. Oh God. So they had to go in and put a cap on, and then I had to get a root canal. Is that what? Yes, a root canal done a week after I delivered. Oh my God. So yes. I was like done. I was over it. I was so like, just get this baby out. <laughs> what about you, Kate? Um, I I didn't ha necessarily have too many complications, thankfully. Um, Besides the tailbone breaking. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness. Here, come this way. You're not quite in frame. Sit down. I just think she's I'll try it. Down. I'll try it. You guys. You guys should just have to. It is what it is today, okay? Yeah. We've got a baby. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, but this is about pregnancy and babies, and this yeah. is what happens when you have yeah. one. Things like this, this okay? Mommy doesn't get a day off for yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I wouldn't. Yeah. Here, yes. Yes. come back to me. Look out, just pass, look out. pass the baby. Pass the baby. Yeah. Pass the toy. <gasps> Where are you Move going? Uh, we're going to do this way. <gasps> <laughs> All right, now let mommy talk, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, so I, the way I found out I was pregnant was I was constantly hungry. Um, and... I mean, I'm that narrow, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and I have a pretty <coughs> big appetite, I'm not gonna lie. But I realized, like, after I would eat, like, a pretty big meal, I would want another big meal. Mm. And I was like, that's kind of weird because normally I'm full by now so I was like okay let me give it a few more days and then I started craving whole milk throughout my entire pregnancy that's the only thing I craved interesting yes which is disgusting by the way because <laughs> when you're going through like a gallon every two days there's a problem yeah <laughs> Um, I think we have separation anxiety over here. Oh, yes. Does he have it now? Is he yes. starting to get to that age? It's so bad. Oh, and it's so hard. hard. My hair. Oh, yeah. hair. Oh, my God. And I feel bad mommy. for my husband because he wants nothing to do with him right now. Aww. That's okay. Aww. It's okay. It happens. That'll all change in a couple years. Yes. And then he'll be sitting there crying, going, why don't you love me? <laughs> so enjoy it. Yes. yes. <laughs> But, um, so, you know, the rest of the pregnancy was pretty good besides just constantly wanting to eat and the craving. And then once I reached around, I think it was like five or six months, um, they went to do some blood work and they found out that I was anemic. Mm -hmm. Um, which it, it didn't really cause me to feel any different. It was just the medication um, that mm -hmm. they give you would kind of make me nauseous. Mm -hmm. um, and then with the birthing class that we took, you know, they would talk about your contractions um, being, you know, certain minutes apart and things like that. Well, the day before my due date, so the, the 13th around, let's see here. No, actually it was the 14th. It was the 14th around 2.30 in the morning. I woke up and um, I had to use the restroom. So every hour I would wake up having to go to the restroom and I was just in excruciating pain. Mm -hmm. So it was very strange to me because I was like, I'm not having actual contractions. I'm just having pain when I go to the back. Did bathroom. you have a UTI? I did not. Oh, okay. So it was just, it was just strange. And then I developed double vision. <gasps> oh, gosh. oh no. Yes. That's so, never good. No. So I contacted the doctor. Are you not going to sit for me? <laughs> He's like, I do what I want. <laughs> I would say there's a mat to put him down on, but now he can crawl, right? Yeah. So we're not baby-proofed over no, here. No, you're not. That's okay. There you go. There you go. Because he will destroy everything. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, but so I contacted the doctor, and um, she told me to come in, you know, right away because mm -hmm. they were worried about preeclampsia. 
Um, and they checked my cervix and I was five centimeters. Oh my gosh. Yes. So they were like, all right, you're in active labor. Um, we're going to have to just, you know, get you in the room and start. So throughout, you know, because obviously this portion takes hours. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did not feel any of my contractions. Okay. So, yes. <laughs> all my main. Me, all my major contractions, I could not feel them. Thank so, God you went in. Yeah. You would have delivered your baby at home. <laughs> yeah. You would have been a baby. You would have been all nights about tea and like there'd be a baby in the yeah. <laughs> Bobby would have no idea what to do oh, about that one. Oh, then she ended up again. Okay. So, <laughs> so, um, and so, yes, yeah, so, here you go. Here you go. <laughs> Put you back in the toy bed. One more, se one more second, you guys. Well, I just wanna, okay, we should take a, a, a second and talk about this. Um, this is why it's so hard for military spouses to have careers outside of the house. Amen. Yes. This is um, this is just the reality of our life. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Kate's husband, God bless him, woke up today and was like, he had the day off, but he was literally like, I've worked every single day for how many days straight because when you're in the military, it's not a regular nine to five job. Oh. And he was just, bless his heart, exhausted. And he, we have this on the schedule, this filming um, for like a week now. And he was like, yes, I can watch him, I'm off. But then he woke up this morning and was like, I, I literally can't, can't even yeah, function. Like I can't function yeah. to take care of myself. And so alone, Kate yeah. is like, just make it at work, yeah. you know? Yeah. You just, got it? Yeah. yeah. She's a trooper. Yeah. 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 <laughs> A lot of military parents. I mean, this is if you're gonna get pregnant in the military, yeah. you know, this is the reality. best example. This it's reality. Is what it is. Um, it just you never sometimes the fact of the matter is is that um even though you have a spouse who loves your baby and who loves you more than anything, sometimes you have to act as a single parent. Yeah. I call it the part-time single parent syndrome. Like yeah. that's sometimes what it feels like. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, I'm kind of glad it's happening right now so yeah. that everybody can see yeah. like it just and it, but it just kind of becomes your way of life. And seriously, yeah. To you? Um, oh, sorry, I'm gonna grab your shirt. I don't think any of us would change the craziness. You'll be right for yeah. anything. No. I. Oh, hey. it's okay. What's wrong? It's okay. And that's why too. <laughs> I think for Olivia, you know, wants to wait until her husband's out. Yeah. yeah. And that's a great yeah. thing to do if that's yeah. if you know, like, hey, like we're young, we have the time to wait. Mm -hmm. See, look, babies mess up your lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would have messed it up anyway. So we're good. I yeah. guess my point is, is that it's not easy, but it's so 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 worth it. Mm -hmm. It is definitely. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so there's many other reasons too. Like, I'm 21 years old. Like, we are not ready. Yeah. Really all to have yeah. kids yet. Take your time, yeah. experience. And we waited a long time. <laughs> it's just something we yeah. almost, yeah. yeah. And we have our lives right now, and it's just something we're like, yeah. to bring a kid in would be, yeah, we, we're living right now. Yeah. Travel, yeah. experience the world, yeah. like make. <laughs> you are a rock star. <laughs> you you got it right over here. Rockstar. Rockstar mom status. I am here. no Kate right now. We yeah. got a couple <laughs> years so we can be a Kate. For so many, I think starting like a small business or something like that, where so many yeah. that's so attractive to military spouse families yeah. because uh -oh. okay, I mean, this is the reality, it's hard, yeah, to yeah. juggle, Ooh. yeah, it really is, yeah, goodness. <laughs> Back to your story, yes, yes, okay. Um, where was I? <laughs> you, you were five centimeters dilated, yes. you went in, yes. Um, so they brought me back to the room and, you know, waiting to do this for hours, of course. And, um, you know, not after feeling anything, the doctor was finally like, okay, we have to break your water. Um, so they did that and, you know, they were um, preparing me saying, okay, so you're going to have contract, you know, major contractions now, um, which, you know, obviously it's going to take a little bit, but you're going to feel them. 
and I still could not feel them. Wow. And then I remember just something triggered um, where I became extremely stressed out. And because I was so stressed, I could finally feel my contractions. And they came, you know, just back to back to back that I was like hunched over and all fours on the bed, like, you know, bless my husband's heart because he was, he had a pan, like catching me throwing up. Wow. Um, so that, you know, once, once you have a baby <coughs> and you're in that process, all the modesty goes oh, yeah. right out Done. the window. You don't care. So, no. <laughs> so, and I, that, that was the biggest thing because like I was, you know, I didn't want to ever show anything. Yeah. I wanted to make sure there wasn't a lot of people in the room. And look at you, breastfeeding. <laughs> <I know. laughs> you don't care anymore. No. You just don't. There's no modesty. No, there really once you're isn't. A mom. <laughs> but the, the biggest complication was the tailbone breaking because that is a six to ten week recovery oh. time. On top of recovering from birth. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And what was horrible is, so it's nice because the military has now, um, you know, added extra days towards paternity leave. So um, now the uh, dads, they get 14 days. Um, so those first two weeks were wonderful because, you know, I was pretty much bedridden. And he was able to get up, get us food, clean the house, take care of um, our son. And then right after that, he left for like a three week underway. <gasps> yeah. So like, thankfully I had family super close who were like, no, you, you know, you come on down because like we, we get it. Like you can barely move. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I think I had a pretty easy pregnancy. I just didn't know that I was in labor. Oh my gosh, so, that is crazy. Yes. You're like five seconds away from like delivering from <laughs> home. Yeah. Or like in the car. That oh my gosh. Crazy. Oh, yeah. I was in Walmart. I was, <laughs> <terrified>. <laughs> Walmart. I was terrified because like I said, the pain started at 2.30 in the morning, but it was only when I had to use the restroom. Mm. And then I didn't go into the doctor. We didn't get there until like almost one o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. wow. So like 24 hours into labor and half of it I didn't even feel. Oh my gosh. Blessing. Blessing. <laughs> Blessing. When my, were you like super freaked out when your water broke? I was so freaked out. No, I was just like somebody put a needle in my back immediately. I literally sent my husband, no joke, while, while we were waiting for the um, anesthesiologist to get in the room, I was like, hey. Go to Krispy Kreme right now and get that <laughs> anesthesiologist and all these nurses up and have some donuts because I was like so grateful and thankful for the modern miracle that oh is God. drugs. Like I was like, I am such a wimp. So as soon as I could get that epidural, it was yeah. in my back and everybody got donuts. I was like, thank you. Well, I, I love you guys. I, I would have married him if I wasn't already married. <laughs> I had to go to the bathroom. So we were in the middle of watching a movie. And I went to go to the bathroom and I just kept going and going and going and going and going. And after like five minutes, I was like, Ryan comes by and he was like, is everything okay in there? I was like, I can't quit peeing. And he it's, was the, like, um, it's the IV fluids. Were you on IVs? No, this was oh. at home. <gasps> oh. This was at home. And so I was, I was like, I can't quit peeing. And he was like, what? So I opened up the door. I was oh, like, you're I can't see because of my stomach. I was like, I need you to look. Am I peeing? And he's like, I'm not looking. And I was like, something is wrong. I can't do it. And so like, I'm like, kind of pink. And I was like, it's not yellow. I don't get it. And so I was like, give me the phone. I need to call the hospital. And so I call and I was like, they're like, hello. I was like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm 39 weeks pregnant and I can't quit pee. And she was like, she was like, good lord. She was like, honey, I think your water broke. You need to get here immediately. I was like, oh my god. And so I up and we're on our way there, and I was like, they pretty, they probably think I'm like an idiot. I don't know, but it wasn't like a dramatic like you're in the kitchen like cooking something and your water just breaks. It was just like. I had to pee. It just kept going. coming. I was like, I 
so confused with life right now. When you started that story, I was like, man, why couldn't she stop peeing? It took me a while to catch that yes. water had broken. So, I was going to ask you to the episode, I couldn't quit peeing. But, oh, oh God. man, the things that your body does yeah. in that situation. Oh. All right, guys, so that was it for part two. Uh, tune in for part three next week. Um, and like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And we'll see y'all later. Bye. Bye.